Welcome to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami, powered by the Retirement Income Store and brought to you by Adjami Financial Strategies in Guilford, Connecticut and Denver, Colorado. Well, 2008, the financial crisis that happened back then, you know, Daniel, there were conversations, many conversations I would have with people then and after that, where they the, the common phrase would be with the market dropping the way it did, they would say, I lost money just like everybody else did. And I would say, not everybody else. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about how to prepare for retirement in a volatile market. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty volatile. I, I mean, that's how most people talk about risk is volatility, right? That's how most people understand risk is, is by how volatile something is. Sometimes it's that stuff that's not volatile that actually is more risky that that gets people tripped up. But um, but what? How do you prepare? What, what you know? What are you talking about back 2008? That was a long time ago. People made a lot of money since then. Can that, you know, what, right. what, what, what are you well, talking about you 2008? Know, people, people have short memories, right? Number one, and people forget about what happened in 2008. And, and, it's, and the market, the stock market uh, is looking a lot like that right at the moment. Um, but minimum, you know, you know, even if you say, oh, it's not that quite that bad. No, it's not quite that bad, but it didn't happen overnight. It did take, uh, you know, a year uh, actually over a year for the market to go um, from 14,200 and down to 6,700. And uh, will that happen again? I don't know. But the point is, is that that not every, my point to my story was not everybody lost money. We have a lot of clients that didn't lose money in 2008 when everything was coming down. And we got a lot of clients during that period of time because they did lose money. They didn't want to lose it anymore. They wanted to keep what they had because, you know, the people that we work primarily with are people that are, want to make sure that they are able to make as much as they can make, but not put their principal at risk or at significant risk. So, but volatility. Or no, or no what risk they're taking on. Or know Actually what risk they're taking on. Right. right, right, right. So, so, but with that, the whole idea is, you know, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered, right? Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. So the idea there is that, you know, as the market's going up um, and you're making money on it, that's all a good thing. But, you know, the, the key is to be able to know when, when to hold them, when to fold them, right? As Kenny Rogers said. And, uh, you know, with that, the idea is that there, I've heard a lot of people how they got out, you know, in January of last year, December of 2021, that kind of thing. And, and people call them fools. Right, right. At but, the time. But they got out at they got out the peak. Even those people that got out in January of 2021, not just January 2022, right? January 2021, the market still went up after that. Um, but the point is, you're never going to sell at the peak on purpose, and you're never going to buy at the bottom on purpose. The whole idea of investing is buy low, sell high. But you're never going to sell high on purpose at the very peak. You're never going to buy at the very bottom on purpose necessarily. You might know, hey, it's low, but you don't necessarily know that it's the very bottom. So um, um, from that, the key is to sell while it's high and to buy while it's low. And, um, you know, that is how do you prepare? So first, how you're preparing is by having getting in the right mindset and giving the right help to get you in the position that you need to be in to, to profit from a volatile market. Yeah, people are tired of this of this roller coaster. And um, as, as you're talking about this, people who got out, people have made a lot of money. If you invested, right, um, it, 10 years ago. Right. You've made a lot of money. And you're 10 years older. Right. And the question is, do you want to go through um, this kind of volatility again if you're getting ready for retirement? Um, I like when you're talking about you talk about the market volatility. You're talking about um, buying high, selling low. I tricked you there. You didn't even catch it. I mean, I said buying high, selling low. <laughs> no, so I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
that's, that's what people what, do though exactly but, um, you want you want to buy low and sell high but people's fear gets in the way of that right right um so when you're talking about that what if you don't like the rules to the game <laughs> well that you know there's Change there's them. other games in town and there's yeah, other games in town right? Yeah. Right. And that's what that's what that's what we want to talk about. Right. Maybe we should have called it changing the rules to the game. Yeah. But, um, you know, you want to change those rules to the game. If you don't like the game, play a different game. And if you're getting ready for retirement, we're talking here about volatile markets and retirement. If you're getting ready for retirement, you can taste that. You need to start playing a different game because this buy, sell, buy, sell markets always come back. All these mantras. Right. They don't work. Not if you want to have a lifestyle. I talked to a client the other day and his, uh, his wife talked to, you know, she had a nice guaranteed interest rate in her, her and her teacher's plaid and uh, some hot shot advisor convinced her to move her money into the market, like immediately crashed, right? Like she had no business doing that. And now she's right. like retired and she's looking at the markets all day. She's never looked at the markets her whole life. Mm -hmm. And now she's retired, but she's checking the markets every day. Sounds sounds stressful. Not because she Daniel. enjoys it. Not because she enjoys it. Because she's worried yeah. about her money. That's that. That's a she's a, ha, experiencing a lot of stress. I can feel that pain. I feel that stress right there. And that's why we have financial strategies with Andrew Daniel Ajmi because we believe an educated retiree is a stress free retiree. Today we're talking about how to prepare for retirement in a volatile market. How to how to retire in a volatile market. We have a paper named exactly that to go along with today's show that we'd love to be able to give to you by calling 800-725-7616 for your free copy or hitting us up on the web at our website, adjme.com, A-G-E-M-Y.com. How to prepare for retirement in a volatile market. Daniel, that's uh, that, um, you know, when we're talking about that buy low, sell high, all these kinds of things, these can work for us in a volatile market. But you know, you had said earlier, what do you do when you don't like the rules? Well, change the rules or change the game, right? Get a different game. And that's what happens to people. They don't think of it in these terms. I think when people retire, the game changes. So therefore the rules change. And if you keep playing by the same rules that you did prior to retirement, you're not going to win or the likelihood of your winning drops significantly. And what I'm talking about is if, if you're in or close to retirement and you need your retirement money to live on, as opposed to you're just trying to save it for your kid's sake, well, you, you're, the rules change because usually you're in a situation where you're accumulating, 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 stuffing money away, making it grow, go from $10 a share, $11 a share, $13 a share, $14 a share. Well, in retirement, you can't live like that. You can't have invest your money like that if you're going to need it to live on. Because the problem, if you keep using it like that, we have what's going on in the market now, and you take money out, you're actually cannibalizing your money. If 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 you paid thirteen dollars a share, like Daniel say, buying high, selling low, and you have to take money out, and you take it out at ten dollars a share, you cannibalize your money. You just gave away money, put it in somebody else's pocket. That's egregious. That's terrible. That's that's unacceptable. Um, you have to change to be able to work with dividends and income so that you can take it from the dividends and interest rather than from the principal. So the rules change and you have to be aware of that and you have to prepare for that and, for, and you have to prepare for volatile markets. How do we prepare for volatile markets? How do we get our clients preparing for that, Daniel? Well, you got to start first with with evaluating your 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 actual risk, right. right? Your actual risk, not like what some computer generated thing spits out based on one year prior history. It's crazy sometimes when you actually look at the data that these things are using to come up with the stuff. It's like like some of these huge hedge funds that have blown up, like. They get it down to 99.9%. It will never crack, fall apart. Like long-term capital management in, back in 94, 98, um, that happened with, falls apart. And then they look, well, they were only using 10 years of data. Well, 
what do you expect? Russia hasn't blown up in 10 years. Russia blows up, it blows you up, right? Like these kinds of things. So first, what is the real risk you're taking on? What do you own, right? right? Again, if you've been investing for the last 10 years or so, you're probably already rich. Like if you if you had a certain amount of money, you're probably already rich. So what are you trying to get double rich for? Like right. take the money, right? Take the money and protect the money and let it pay you. That's right. what we talk about, the definition of an investment. It needs to pay you. So when we're talking about evaluating risk, are your assets paying you mm -hmm. or are you hoping that they're going to increase in value like they have in the past? And that's the kind of risk evaluation I'm talking about, because if they're not paying you, are you in the phase of life where you want to be speculating? Right. Okay. Second, with, with this risk evaluation, is it paying you enough? Because just because it's paying you, can you live off of that? If markets stayed flat for 10 years, if markets, you know, were just choppy for the next 10 years and you didn't make any appreciation, your accounts did not get any G, right? We call it TR equals I plus G. Total growth is made up of income, is made up of growth plus income. You didn't get any of the growth. Would you be okay or would you be cutting into your principal, right? right. These are These are the risk tolerance kind of things we're talking about because most people we talk to at least are not interested in you know looking at the underlying balance sheets of the companies or maybe they own funds so you can't even look at the underlying strength so we're not talking about that don't that's too deep don't even worry about that just think about these things is it an investment is it paying you and is it paying you enough if you had no growth for the next 10 years would you be okay that's that's great, Daniel. I say know thyself, right? Because when you look at your true investment risk tolerance or your, you know, and evaluate that, that's huge because some people do not, I run into this all the time. And this is where my ministerial background comes into play uh, is because people will, well, they want to make as much money as they want. And that's where the pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered kind of thing, because everybody wants to make a ton of money. And they think that the more risk that they do have, the, the, the more return that they get. But that, if that were true, it wouldn't be risky. And they don't know that until the markets drop. And then they're like, ah, get me out of here. And that's why they buy high and sell low because the emotions come into play. And, and that's what we're going to talk about next. But so uh, anyway, it's time for us to take a break. And we'd love to be able to uh, uh, continue to educate you or looking back and forth. We got this book for you today, Return on Principle by our good friend, David Scranton. Lovely book, great book to be able to tell about. He tells us a little bit about what he went through and how the principles of his life and how they apply to finances and money and how they can apply to yours as well to educate you to know what you don't know and be able to even help you understand your own risk tolerance from that standpoint. Call us at 800-725-7616 for your free copy. The next five callers, 800-725-7616. Call now. I'm David Scranton, founder of the Retirement Income Store. If you're in or near retirement, are you certain you have the right retirement plan in place? Do you want to help ensure your nest egg will last you all throughout retirement? Take our retirement review quiz and find out in five minutes or less if you're doing everything you can to achieve a more successful retirement. Visit us online at agemy.com. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjemy in Connecticut and Daniel Adjemy in Colorado. So Mary and Joel became clients and we went through the universe of options of how they could be able to invest their monies. And uh, as we went through that, you know, you could see their eyes widen and they said, oh, we want to go for more risk with this. And and yeah, we want to put some in the conservative, but but really we want to go with the, with the risk because we think that's going to work out well. And so so uh, against my better judgment, I allowed them to do that. And and when that occurred, you know, we they started off and they were started going OK, but then we had a hiccup. We had a hiccup to where the chickens that they bought got skinny and their account balance came down. They were bringing the eggs in. The eggs were still pumping out nicely, but they said, Andrew, help, you know, they are chickens guys get here. We're losing money. And I tried to explain to them, no, you know, 
It's just your chickens are skinnier. You still have them. They're still laying the eggs. And with time, they're going to come. Oh, but we're so scared. Oh, we're going to lose our money. And so we, we, they decided that they wanted to take their money out and they wanted to put it into something that was not going to lose any principal. At this point, they had already lost money because they didn't know themselves and they, they didn't listen to the voice of reason in what I brought to them when I said, I don't think that's the best way to go. Now, now I will not allow people to do that anymore. I've learned from my past mistakes and from their past mistakes. My name's Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about how to prepare for retirement in a volatile market. And that that's something I talk to people very often about, which is there's two sides to every investment decision. There's the numbers and the analytic side, which we can help anybody with. And then there's the emotional side and the person knows themselves. Maybe you had to learn them to help them know themselves in that situation. Right. But just because something makes sense by the numbers doesn't mean it's right for you. Because you you need to live. And and we talk about a stress-free retirement a lot here. And that's what we're trying to do. And part of how you have a stress-free retirement is by making those decisions that will allow you to have a stress-free retirement. Because if you're worried about the stock market and you're on a cruise and you have to check the stock market and it's crashing and it's falling and you hate your cruise, even though you're on a beautiful place with beautiful people, eating wonderful food, <laughs> it doesn't mean you're having a good time. That's right? stress, that stress and, is a killer. That's right. It's very stressful. And that's, that's for you. That's for each person individually, right? right. right. And this is, this is, again, this is not talking about the quantitative side. This is not saying markets always come back. This is not saying this is what you can handle. This is the volatility that you as a human being want to put up with, that you want to handle. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's part of knowing thyself. Right. And, and understanding that and, and getting in um, counsel in regard to that. And, you know, the key is to get the right balancing in there. And, uh, you know, from my perspective, you know, the balance is between three areas. Right. It, it's insured money. It's not insured money and it's hope money. Uh, you know, and, and how much do you want to have insured? How much and not insured? How much in hope? And, uh, that's part of where it comes into play. Uh, but, you know, when we're talking about this, the emotions are pay a big part, right? And, you know, many times, you know, you have a couple come in and one of them is emotional and one of them is not emotional, but, you know, uh, you know, they need to balance each other out. Uh, and sometimes you got single people. And if they're emotional, that's going to be difficult because they're going to do knee-jerk reactions. And, and they're especially the ones that, that buy high, sell low. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the, un, that the, the non-emotional people uh, do that as well. You know, in my mind, that's the importance of being able to have somebody to manage your money, manage somebody that knows what's going on with that, uh, leaving it to a professional. Um, you know, and that's where, you know, I like you, Daniel, you know, because, you know, I'm more emotional and you're more professional in, in the, 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 take the emotions out of it for me. And you've done better for my portfolio than I could do for myself. So, uh, you know, that that's important to do, to be able to, to allow people to play to their strengths from that angle. What do you have to say that? Yeah, I, that's, that is a, that's another aspect in that emotional bucket, um, we are emotional beings, right? And when we feel stress, we feel pressure upon us. Then we, we, unless we are experts at dealing with that, um, or we're able to divorce ourselves from that situation, um, you can make some bad decisions. And that's exactly what you're talking about when your people sell low. It's because it's the compounding of stresses, right? Maybe right. they lost their job. Or maybe they just retired, or maybe they they keep watching their account go down, or this has happened to them three times before, and they don't remember that it went back up, or the, right, or there might be another way. They just think about, Here or they're all again. happening at the and same it, time. It keeps, yeah, it keeps, it keeps compounding, and compounding, and compounding, and 
they don't really know what they're doing. They probably shouldn't be managing their money themselves. That's why they're in this situation. Or their advisor is brand new to the field and doesn't know what they're doing and shouldn't be in this situation. Or the firm that they're with is a firm that's not thinking about them, that's thinking about the firm's balance sheet, right? right. We, we've, we've talked about um, we've talked about quite a few times some of these products that are specifically designed by these big firms, you know, um, the Morgan Stanleys, yeah. right? right? The JP Morgans, uh, the Barclays, right? The, these yeah. big firms that they design products and they, they're not volatile products. Yeah. So they feel safe. Yeah. And there's a bunch of fees inside, but what it does is it transfers the liabilities when things will go really bad from the investment firm to the investor. And, and this blows my mind because it should be the opposite way around. You should be, able, you say, I take this much risk, but I don't want to lose more than that. Right. And they do it the other way around. You didn't take nothing, but unless everything blows up, then you lose everything. It's it's just, it's crazy. So you got to watch out for some of these kinds of things as well. But but this is the emotional, this is, this is the emotional understanding yourself, um, understanding your partner and, making sure that the person you're working with is understanding your emotional prowess. Yes. Those structured products can be a killer and uh, you know, investment companies do it. Insurance companies do it. A lot of places do it. And you have to be able to understand that stuff. You listen to financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel Latchamy. This father and son team is here to educate you, help you to be able to know what you don't know because an educated retiree is a stress-free retiree and who wants to enter retirement with stress. Uh, so today we uh, have a paper uh, where we're talking about how to prepare for retirement in a volatile market. And we have a paper by that exact name that we have prepared for you with this. And we'd love to give that to you. So give us a call, 800-725-7616. Get your free copy or check us out on the web at agme.com, A-G-E-M-Y.com. Uh, at the same time, they ask for it through the contact us um, or check us. Well, another thing you can do is listen to our podcast. This is a radio show that's going to turn into a podcast when it's done. And you can, anywhere that you listen to podcasts or also on our YouTube channel where you can actually watch it as well as listen to it. Dan, you know, one of the things what I think about when we're talking about this whole thing and investing for emotions, one of the things that takes emotions out of it is getting a good strategy. Now, a lot of people out there talk about a good plan. Well, when it comes to finances, I think plans are nowhere near as good as strategies. In my mind, plans are more along the hope realm, whereas strategies are the guaranteed and promise realm. And, you know, hope is nice, but, you know, you don't want to base your retirement, but hope is not a retirement plan. So, but a strategy, a strategy is something that that you put together, you strategize for something that works, that's proven at work in a way of a methodology, a logistical methodology that works for just what, doing it and watching it and just, just keep on going on and moving on. A lot less moving parts than a plan. In a plan, typically a plan is either fact based upon fiction or fiction based upon fact, depending where the where the um, the the results are. Right? If you've got, um, you know, so the point is that plans change. When plans change, then you got to you got to have plan B. You got to have plan C. You got to do all these things. But if the strategies are good strategies, they work through whatever. So when people are in are looking at retirement and investing in monies for retirement, we talked about um, how plans, uh, um, um, the game changes in retirement than before retirement. So when the game changes, and if you have a good strategy for that game change, um, then you're going to be able to just go into retirement smoothly with less stress yeah yeah and and on that you know emotional side that less stress side um when people are when people are using um these plans right we're going to dollar cost average into the markets. We're going to be fully invested in the S&P 500. We're going to have 
seventy percent in the S and P five hundred, and you know thirty percent in cash. We're going to diversify between all these funds, right? It 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 doesn't allow you to have a a sense of confidence where you know if outcomes change, the the strategy is able to adapt to the outcome. So for example, markets come down. Um, was the plan set up for markets coming down? You know, there a, a war happens, you know, over uh, Russia, tax Ukraine. Was the plan set up for fuel prices and interest rates going up and, and you know, right? So the strategy, how are the strategies different? Well, the strategy is set up that things can come in and come out um, based upon what's going on in the environment, right? There's, there's always flexibility. Um, interest rates go up. Well, we had fifty thousand dollars worth of bonds come due. Now we just have cash sitting there. We get to invest at the higher interest rate. That's a strategy. You were play. You didn't know interest rates were necessarily going to go up, but the strategy was set up so if that happened, you had this this windfall, this this cash coming into the account, and it allows you. You had an emergency come up. The stock market crashed, right? These are the kinds of things where you you could do a lot of things when you have fifty thousand dollars just dump into your account in cash. Markets are down 25, 30, 40 percent. And you just had fifty thousand dollars show up, right? That's that is a nice thing to be able to do. And that's kind of the strategy was set up to have that available. Excellent. Oh, good example, Daniel. I love it. Listen, we need to take a break and you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Atchme. This father-son team is, is here to help you and educate you to make smart choices and smart decisions rather than by decisions by default. We love to give you a book today to be able to help you educate you further on this easy read book by our friend David J. Scranton. A lot of uh, alphabet soup after his name there. Return on Principle is the name of this book. And we love to put this in your hand. You can have it for free for the next five callers at 800-725-7616. Next five callers, 800-725-7616. Call now. We'll be right back after this. History tells us the market goes up and the market goes down. What would you do if you lost half of your retirement savings? It's time to make the shift to steady, reliable retirement income. And where do you go? The Retirement Income Store. Log on to adjami.com for your free retirement review. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. The Retirement Income Store, where retirees go for income. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. So, Daniel, as you well know, you know, one of the things that I've tried to teach each of my children, you and your siblings there, is that, that you ever go into a restaurant and see an older man or woman serving tables. There's a lot of things you don't know about that, but there's one thing you know, that they're not there because they want to be there. And so, you know, with that, I taught you that to, to observe for that so that you could leave them a good tip um, for that very reason, right? But, you know, what has happened is, in this country is that many people have decided to go back to work because they can't feel that they can retire. They have to retire from retiring and go back to work because their assets are not what their assets were. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. And today we're talking about how to prepare for retirement in a volatile market. And um, yeah, that's a that's that is something you've taught us, and I, I've always kept that in mind, kept that top of mind, and thought about you know there are people you know there's people who enjoy working there's people who need to get out there and meet people and right. and they get energy right from being right. around people and as you say it they have 5000 facebook friends and you <laughs> they think every single one is their best friend right <laughs> right so uh 
that's not who you're talking about. The person who's doing that just because they want to get out there and spend time with other human beings and stuff like that. You're talking about the person who's trying to keep the lights on. Right. Exactly. And, you know, usually when it comes to somebody serving a table in a restaurant and when that's stinking hard work, right? So, you know, they're, that's what I mean. They're not there because they want to be there, generally speaking, you know, for the most part. Now, there, there's, there are people who may want to go back to work because they want to, because they want to, like you say, they want to, you know, they want the socialization. They want to feel like they're useful. Those, and that's all well and good. However, unfortunately, now, like in 2008, there are people who are going back to work because they have to. And they don't feel as wealthy as they used to have. The market was up and their account values were up. Now the market's down. Their account values are down. They don't feel they don't know how they're going to do it. And, and, you know, once somebody reaches the age of 65 or 70, the possibility of them reaching 90 or living into their 90s, uh, statistically speaking, is, is phenomenal. It's a huge possibility of that. And, you know, how many centarians are there today compared to, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago? A lot of people over 100 years old these days. Constant, it seems like I'm hearing about that all the time, about my mother's 100 or she lived over 100 or whatever the case may be. And um, so because of that, you, people want to make sure that they're not going to outlive their money, which is the, you know, their number one fear is, is living, outliving their money is the number one fear of retirees. And we learned from one of the, one of the previous um, sessions that we had on podcasts and shows is that the, the number one mistake they make is not you know switching from the accumulation standpoint with your investments into the distribution standpoint in the in the right time and in the right way well you know these people who are uh going back to work these people who are um uh, um you know not feeling like they can retire yet it part of it is because of their plan and um you know their plan and the problem with plans are plans change, right? And plans are typically fact based upon fiction or fiction based upon fact. I'm a, a fiction. Yeah. And um, whereas a strategy is something that works no matter what. So you never know if a plan is going to work or you have plan A, plan B, plan C, but strategies work come no matter what, because it's a, a methodology that's employed. And the more that people have a, a good strategy in place, puts them in a better spot for retiring in a recession and being able to retire and stay retired. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're saying these things, right? And what are the numbers that back it up? Well, in the, the past year, you know, 1.5 million retirees um, have to, had to re-enter the U S labor force right now that might be part-time jobs that might be full-time jobs but they it, it, it was so popular that people were retired that i'm done i'm out um in 2000 in 2020. 2021 especially but 2020 uh -huh. 2021 when all that money was going around that right. they called it the great resignation because everyone could leave and no one felt your house was up your 401k was up everything was up and people felt good and now I, that's a serious <laughs> number 1.5 million have had to re unretire and go back to work in some form. Yeah. In the and, last year. Right. And, and Daniel, it's not just because their investments are down, right? And housing's starting to come down. But the big factor, I think, is inflation. I mean, people. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, in, in this thing here, it, another 25% feel they have to put of Americans feel they have to put their retirements off because of price increases and because of uncertainty and because right. of these kinds of things. So, so you're getting at both sides. You got people who didn't retire and they say 25% are saying we have to push it off. And then you have this 1.5 million who are actually going back to the workforce in some right. form or fashion. Right. And some of those might be going back because they want to, not because mm -hmm. they have to, but that's probably not the majority right? That's a ton of people. Well, you know, and that's, that's what I'm saying. If they had a strategy that was in place that could protect them, protect their assets from, from going down in value, lower their risk, increase their return, help them to be able to stay up with inflation and stay up with taxation, that would be a great strategy to employ. And, you know, there are, we know a lot of people with that strategy, don't we? But there are, yeah. 
but unfortunately, not everybody knows how to do this, and that's why we're having this show. Well, well, it's a show, lost art, right? Yeah, right, right, exactly. Um, you know, everybody that you know, CFPs, certified financial planners, and and the whole financial industry is being taught how to plan, how to plan. Well, that's not, you know, what people used to do. That's not, you know, what's old and true and tried and true kind of thing. So you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajmi because people don't know what people don't know. And we're here to educate you and help you to be able to be able to, to understand what decisions need to be made and how to be able to make good decisions. An educated consumer is a happy and stress-free consumer, right? So Today, we're talking about how to prepare for retirement in a volatile world. Uh, we're, we have a paper that we put together uh, to be able to help you in planning and, and strategizing for, um, for retiring. And this is called, it's all about investing for income in a stock in, in the stock market. Oh, I don't want to stay from away from the stock market. Well, the key, the strategy is income. Because if you get dividends and income, it's a renewable resource that happens whether the market is up or what, whether the market is down, whatever. And just like you know, chickens, um, as long as you have chickens, you got eggs to eat and the eggs keep coming. But if you buy roosters, guess what? You don't have eggs. And if you want to eat, you have to kill a rooster. So, um, so that's what we're talking about. We love to put this in your hand, investing for income in the stock market. Uh, call 800-725-7616. Short, easy read paper. Give you a little primer. It's the, the Cliff Notes version um, kind of thing of a, a book, some of the books that we have. Um, 800-725-7616. Um, Daniel, you know, as we continue to talk about this, you know, and strategies that work, you know, that in, and this um, paper, investing for income in the stock market, that's a, that's a huge key to strategy, right? I mean, that's a great strategy, investing for dividends and interest, because you, as you had said, you know, investment is something that pays you. And when you get dividends and interest, you're getting paid, right? Right. And that's, that's where the strategy comes in, because I, I liked where you were going right before we, we, uh, we had to uh, take that little break, and where you were going with the plan, right? Everything's about the, these plans. You go to your planner and he helps you or she helps you put together a plan so you can see this stuff. But then if something changes, it's this written stagnant, you know, static plan. Right. And, and, and the strategy is more of an art, yeah. right? And, dynamic. and it's more of a dynamic. But, but it's art because it's not just putting stuff in the computer. You and I had a conversation the other day and we were talking about a, a suitability person and nothing against suitability people, but, <laughs> but the whole process was backed up because these suitability people. And I was like, there's nothing, there's no art behind it. You're not talking to the person this belongs to. You're not asking questions to find out what's going on with their lives. You know nothing about them. The only thing you know is what was written down on this paper. And you don't need a human being to figure that out. You could just put it in an algorithm. It will spit out either, yes, they qualify or no, they don't qualify, right? Compared to the art, if you sit down and talk to the person and find out the emotions behind them, what's coming up in the future, what have they done in the past, these kinds of things, and get a the the things you can't necessarily write down, right? That's the difference between the plan and the strategy or the art, right? Yeah. And I think that is super important because because part of planning for retirement in a volatile market, yeah, is having that art behind it, seeing it, seeing what's happened before, and having having the ability, the art, the strategy to not only make it through. Mm -hmm. not only continue your same lifestyle but benefit from it right because we're all used to benefiting from volatile markets when we're young and Working. we're saving yeah. right yeah. And right. money's coming out of our paycheck and going in and then a few years later we look at it we're like how did i make all this money well yeah. because you bought low you didn't think about it <laughs> you bought low down. and do it was dollar a strategy, cost averaging. Right? right? It was a strategy, yeah. strategy more so than a plan. Right? right, right. And 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 now things things get a little bit different. Things change around a little bit, right? Uh huh. Right. That's that's excellent point. You know, uh, um, uh, uh, dollar cost averaging works great as a great strategy when you're accumulating money, but that strategy changes. 
when it's time to start taking money out in retirement, it actually works against you rather than for you at that point. And, you know, planning, like you say, planning is the same old, same old. You have plan A, plan B, plan C, like I said, right? But strategies just, it's a methodology that works no matter what. You know, the, the planning aspect is the, the same old, same old, buy and mold, right? Same old, buy and mold. You buy it, you hold it, and it molds, especially in this market. I mean, I, we, you and I won't be uh, a bit surprised if the S&P 500 doesn't really do much of anything over the next 10 years, up and down, basically sideways over the next 10 years or so, right? Um, right. I'm not saying it's going to, but we won't be a bit surprised if that happens because it had such a run up so fast over time that it's kind of it's kind of like a child. Um, you know, you buy a buy a big pair, you know, buy some overalls, buy some clothes for a child. You know, a child's two years old, but you, you buy four year old clothes. Now you have two choices, right? One is you could shrink the clothes to fit the kid, or you can wait till the kid grows into it. Well, yeah. in you know what's happened is like that kid went from two-year-old size to four-year-old size in in six months. You know, that's a crazy thing, right? Um, and and if that's the case, now he's got to wait two, a, a year and a half. And now the rest of the kid has to catch up to the four-year-old, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> the body exactly. went, but everything else hasn't it, caught up yet. <laughs> exactly, exactly, you know? And that's what's happened in the market. And so that's what we're concerned about with people, you know? And, and when we're, we're talking about retiring in a volatile market, that's what you and our listening audience need to be aware of because just because you went through the 80s and 90s and, and you know, since 2009, uh, the mark and what the market has done, and you made some good money, that doesn't mean the future is going to be that same way. And what happens if it's not, if your money's in the market or attributed to the market? Well, now you have, now you have, um, some some things facing you. So we want you to be aware of where you things are and where things can go. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Adjami. It's time for us to take a break. And before we do, we'd like to offer you this free book, Return on Principle by our friend David, David Scranton. Now, David Scranton here, he is a certified financial planner, right? And he's got all kinds of alphabet soup against his name. But you know what? If there's anybody that will tell you that plans are not the way to go, strategies are, it's this guy right here. All right. My friend, my partner, David Scranton, we'd love to put this book in your hand. It's an easy read book. 800-725-7616. The next five callers, 800-725-7616 to find out how you can have return on principle without using plans and developing strategies. 800-725-7616. Call now. I'm David Scranton, founder of the Retirement Income Store. If you're in or near retirement, are you certain you have the right retirement plan in place? Do you want to help ensure your nest egg will last you all throughout retirement? Take our retirement review quiz and find out in five minutes or less if you're doing everything you can to achieve a more successful retirement. Visit us online at adjami.com. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. That I remember, I remember being at the beach and there's all these, um, these you <laughs> know, like three foot poles right, in front of the parking spots. And my little brother Drew would be like, looks like cool hand Luke was here. <laughs> and... Uh, and you know the movie i think it's called cool hand luke with with right. paul newman and um it's the the movie starts out and he's got a pipe cutter and he's going down the street and he's walking around tightening the pipe cutter on the parking meters and that he'll cut one head off. off the parking yeah. meter go to the next one go to the next one so drew would be like looks like cool hand luke was here because there's just the top of a parking meter without the parking <laughs> meter there, right and um so in the movie he goes to jail and he goes through the whole thing and he's just a rebel and he um he's always getting in trouble and every time he gets in trouble the warden will say looks like we have a failure to communicate there's a failure to communicate right and this is going through the whole thing whole thing he tries to escape a couple times he finally escapes and they've got him locked down in this building at the end of the movie and he's had it. He's had it with them. He's had it with trying to obey the rules. So they have a locked in and they're like, come on out with your hands up. And he walks out and he goes, looks like there's a failure to communicate. 
and then they they shoot him and and that i think is when the the movie ends but the failure to communicate cost him his life i'm daniel adjami and i'm andrew adjami and you're listening to financial strategies with andrew and daniel adjami because people don't know what people don't know today's topic is how to prepare for retirement in a volatile market and uh Daniel, that's that is interesting, and uh, you know how does that relate here? In my mind, what, how that relates to people retiring is that if they are going for a plan and the plan fails, then they fall off the cliff, and it's over, it's done. Kind of, you know, he didn't fall off a cliff, but he got shot at the end. It's all kind of like falling off a cliff, right? And we don't want people to do that. And that's why people are so afraid of retiring in a volatile market. But you don't have to be afraid is the point of this segment of today's show. You don't have to be afraid. There is a way to succeed. There, you know, there is a, a strategy. There are strategies you can employ to put yourself in a position where you can have peace, where you can have, you can be stress-free, right? One of the things yeah. that we say on here is, is, you know, um, um, the, this, the, the um, um, equation of TR equals I plus G total return equals I, which is income plus growth, right? That's where things come from. So if you want to, in, if you want to your retirement to be stress free, invest for the I, not the G. That's a strategy. If you invest for the G, you got a plan. If you invest for the I, generally speaking, you got you got strategy. If you do the right, if you go to a right investment and income specialist from that standpoint. So we talked about we talked about evaluating risk, right? We talked about different types of risk, and we talked about the bigger risk than what like the financial industry thinks of. The risk is um are you getting paid that's the, that's the biggest risk are you for what you need in life or what you need to have the lifestyle you want in retirement are you getting paid enough from your investments right and we went over um investing without emotion and how if you're not able to detach yourself emotionally then maybe you need to have you know a a financial um, consultant, a financial coach to be able to help you work through some of those emotional um, issues, someone who can be detached, right? And there's a lot of studies that show this works very well to have someone who can be detached. Um, when you wrap that in with a, a, a strategy, that's even better because then you can make sure that they're doing their job based that the strategy is on track and they can help you with the emotional side. It can work very well. Um, and then having a plan. Or as we like to say, throw the plan out the window and have a strategy, right? You can have you can have plans to get you to each part of the strategy, but you need a strategy that will be able to be adaptable mm -hmm. in each situation. We talked about, you know, no one was expecting a war in Ukraine, right? Russia right. to attack Ukraine. Well, th did your plan account for that? But a strategy <laughs> should a good strategy will be able to adapt to that. It it, it doesn't affect it because it. In fact, it might benefit from it because the strategy is able to adapt or yeah. has causes not for that, but for the same type of environment, right? Yeah. And now we wanted to focus on the actual name of the show, right? Which is yeah. how to prepare in a volatile market. How can we prepare? How can people who are serious about the retirements, they can taste retirement or they're in retirement. Yeah. How can they not only thrive, right? in this not only be safe in this but actually benefit from it from a volatile market from a volatile world yeah yeah exactly oh you can do that that's possible yeah that's possible that's what we're about here that's what we're trying to say so you're listening to financial strategies with andrew daniel Ajmi because people don't know what people don't know today we're giving away a paper that goes along with what we're doing that will help you in planning in preparing and strategizing thinking ahead for the future for retirement in a volatile world. This one of the things that will help you is this paper. It's called Investing for Income in the Stock Market. So investing for income is key. Ask, call up, call us for 800-725-7616. Ask by, by name, investing for income. Um, and we will be glad to give it to you, no obligation. Or call, check us out on the web, agemy.com, A-G-E-M-Y.com, and ask for it there as well. Uh, Daniel, uh, you know, 
that is the key is what, how can people benefit from these things? Um, uh, you want to go into that aspect in this kind of strategy and how that works, or would you rather have me do that? Well, you asked me a question a little bit earlier, and I think I, I think I did the politician's answer. I never actually ah. answered it. I just <laughs> talked about what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, and that was, we were talking about that, that paper that broke, you know, that, that, that paper, that educational piece we're putting together that we gave out yeah. about investing for dividends in the stock market. Right. And that's a piece of a strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that can help people tremendously, because if you had no growth, if markets didn't move up for the next five years, um, these stocks would continue to pay dividends and interest. Right. Now, some people will say, I like that because they like to be aggressive and they have they have the G, right? They're set up for the growth section and they have the income. And some people will say that's too much for me. So that's where the getting the strategy right for each individual is a big deal. So that's a piece that some people will like to do. If we move down the spectrum and we look at something like um, you know, a preferred stock, that's that's kind of in between. It's got a bigger dividend, a more certain dividend, and it can generate a ton of cash flow, which you get to choose what you want to do with it. You can invest more into the dividend paying stocks. You could invest into other things, right? right. Um, a lot of people like to use their dividends to do things where they can set up like a legacy plan where mm -hmm. the dividends pay for an insurance policy or something like that, where they can have a tax-free inflow of cash when they pass away to leave a legacy, right? For some right. of their, their children or something, that a cause they care about. Mm -hmm. And you move down even more, right? So someone less risk averse may be more interested in corporate bonds where these kinds of things just sit stable, right? right. And, and those nice stable things in a volatile market are pretty great because they generate a lot of cash flow, especially right now, why, why rates are up and people think rates are going to the moon, right? Right. You could get some good deals on these and you could still get the growth because when you buy them under par, right? When you buy yeah. them at a, at a discount. Skinny chickens, I like to say. It Let's changes everything. Yeah, yeah, because you know the discount's gonna go right back to normal. It may go to a premium to happen to happen, so you could get a lot of growth, but you don't need it to. You, It'll go back. You'll get your growth. You collect the dividends no matter what. All this cash flow generation allows you to do a lot of things because right. what it ends up doing is allows you to benefit from volatile markets. If you love the NASDAQ, well, then you get to take your dividends and buy the NASDAQ while it's down. If you um, see Reduce real estate risk. opportunities, mm -hmm. you can use your dividends or bonds coming due, like we talked about earlier in the show, that $50,000 of cash that just dumped into your account because you had some bonds come due. You could take advantage of buying a house, right? Right, right. A, a, a house or this or that. When, when, when you see opportunities, it provides the ability to benefit from it. And if you don't, then you yeah. can keep going on your cruise while everybody else is worried because you've right. got this cash flow coming in, coming in, coming in, and you don't have to be checking markets because you're not doing what markets are doing. You're yeah. doing your own thing. You made your own rules, right? Yeah. Right. Right. And that's where, you know, earlier we talked, you know, you know, the it's very key to have a professional help you a true income specialist to do that, because sure, you can set up, you can go out and buy dividend paying stocks and you can, uh, you know, have the money reinvested. But, you know, there's a, you're you're giving up a lot when you're reinvesting in the same things, especially as they're going up. You know, a, a very a, a great strategy that we like to employ is when those dividends come in, we store them up for a month or two to see and then buy things that are on sale at that point, which are probably not the things that they came out of. So that is a, a very uh, key strategy for having these uh, multiplying your chickens and compounding your money the old fashioned way. So, and then, you know, the other thing aspect is that you didn't talk about is for those people who are truly um, safe and secure minded is, is protecting their principal 100%. And, you know, when the market goes up, it goes up. When the market comes down, it doesn't come down, it stays. And the market doesn't have to go back up to where it was to make more money, it just has to go up the next year. So it keeps pushing it up and compounding your money the old fashioned way through compounding you with interest. 
And for those who are worried about the tax implications, right? If we're talking about after tax money as opposed to qualified money, you get to hide. You get to keep that deferred until you're ready to take it, which allows you to do kind of what we've been talking about. Um, maybe it was our last show about required minimum <laughs> distributions, right? Um, right? <laughs> we we talked about moving money from um, inherited IRAs and things like that into yours. So you get to control the outcome. You get to control when you want to take that taxation. And, and, and those allow you to decide, hey, this year is a good year to take the distribution is not going to mess me up on my whatever, right? Yeah. On my yeah. healthcare credits, on whatever. Um, or I don't want to take extra money this year, so I'm going to keep it deferred. It, it gives you more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, you're, you're listening to Financial Strategies, the Andrew and Danny Ajmiak. Uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time for this week. Uh, but, uh, you know, with that, we want to make sure that you're aware that an educated retiree is a stress free retiree. And because of that, we have this book that we'd like to give to you, Return on Principal, free for your asking, no obligation. Call us at 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616. Seven two five seven six one six for your free copy. The next five callers at eight hundred seven two five seven six one six, and we are look forward to seeing you again. But keep this in mind: if you want your retirement to be stress free, invest for the I and not the G. Bye.